morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Shockwave, and today we're going to be diving into a ballpoint guide. Now, recently I've been playing this in solo queue, some scrims as well. You know, after it got nerfed a while ago, it's been a pretty underrated weapon for the Swallowing players to use. That's why they've kind of switched to Nautilus. But I think there should be some uprising, and I think this is a weapon that is really underplayed and underestimated right now in the current meta. There's a couple of reasons why, but I'm here to say and give you guys reasonings as to why it should become, you know, somewhat of a top tier weapon, you know, somewhere up there, not at the very top, but you know, a mid to high level pick. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe, all the rest of it. Uh, go follow me on Twitter, Twitch, uh, and I've also got a Discord server. So yeah, without further ado, we get dive straight into this. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna to start off with getting into the two variants. So you have your normal ballpoint, uh, Toxic Mist, and Inkjet. This one is the more underwhelming one out of the two. Not the best combo to have Toxic Mist and Inkjet. It's kind of going for a hyper aggressive, you know, kind of splatling when you can already do it with a Nautilus that has the Inkjet and actually has a bomb. So this one. I mean, it can see its uses on Rainmaker, but you know, Inkjet doesn't just doesn't really support the kind of weapon it wants to be. Kind of more of a supportive, but can still kill. That's why the second variant actually is very useful for um, the Ballpoint Spiteling. The Ballpoint Spiteling Nouveau has Beacons and Inkstorm. And with this kit, I actually think these two sub and special weapons go hand to hand really well and supports the weapon greatly. Um, and I think this is what made Ballpoint such a popular pick back when it was in the meta when it first came out. The sub and the special really complement each other, and the main weapon itself obviously was pretty overpowered, let's be real. So yeah, with that, we're just going to go into some gear abilities. You obviously, with every splatling, you're going to be wanting some run speed. You know, off the back of this, large ditch effort. I know a lot of people use it for when they're throwing bombs. You know, placing beacons sometimes can be helpful, putting them down nice and quick when you need to set up really fast and they're coming off respawn, but also just inconficiency purposes, because I normally use it on splat zones to be able to help paint the zone for a little bit longer. Other abilities could be object shredder, I use this as well. A little bit of sub power up, like one or two subs to help with the beacons. Special saver, this is going to be actually really important because your special is 210 points. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere about there. It might even be 220. Obviously, you want your ink resistance, like on any splatling, two subs at least. I think I might use three. I'm not too sure. And obviously, a sub of a uh, quick super jump if you want it, if you feel like you're jumping out a lot. But as a splatling, you should be able to defend yourself, especially with the close turret mode at close range. You shouldn't need to jump out as much. And plus, you have your own beacons to jump to. So, what I normally try and do, I keep one beacon in a safe spot, whether that's on a snipe or somewhere close to spawn, but not too close so it's not useless when you're trying to jump in from your spawn. So if it's a big map, to say it's Starfish, I might keep one on the far top left hand side of the map or on the snipe that's hard for the opposition to get to. If I need to jump out, if I'm in mid, jump to the beacon instead, instead of jumping all the way back to spawn. Now with your movement and the way the weapon works, I, I believe this is probably the most complex weapon in the game with the different modes and the timing and everything so i'm going to do my best to explain what's going on but yeah so basically to start off with when you start charging up you're going to have your short turret mode basically that'll last for i think it's about a quarter of the first ring so obviously when you're charging up you have two rings that kind of charge up once it gets down to a quarter then it will go into your long range firing mode but your movement, you're going to be much faster when you're using your turret mode. So this is what you want to do when you're trying to like paint zone or just paint up for special. You just want to be using that turret mode. So getting used to charging up every quarter and getting used to just, you know, that muscle memory of once it drops down to a quarter, I've got to charge up and then release and then charge up, etc, etc. So that's going to be your first uh, movement option. That's going to be the fastest way you're going to be able to move. Long range mode is a bit slower but obviously it has a lot more range it's equal to i think it has a little bit more than the heavy spiteling but it has less than hydra so it's kind of in the middle right there but it has much better movement options other than that getting used to you know when you're in long range firing mode you have to like fully charge up 
your Slightling again to fully charge to get back to the turret mode, uh, unless you go into squid form and then you can kind of just, you know, half charge or quarter charge to get your turret mode activated. So there's a lot of things to be thinking about when using this weapon if you want to be using your short range mode, your long range mode, things like that. So just have a little play around with it in the, uh, in the training room, get a feel for it, understand what will happen in certain situations if you just pop out the ink and you want to do a quick charge how much time you actually have in the little tyrant mode and how quickly you need to charge up build up the muscle memory yeah just get used to that movement as for aim drills what i like to practice is when you're charging up behind a wall to say you're doing using a normal heavy a normal uh, hydra splatling something like that you charge up behind the wall and then you start firing a little bit and then you peek out so that'll uh, you know, use your turret mode a little bit, and then by the time you peek out, if you've already released the trigger, it'll start firing at long range mode as you're peeking out. So, like some people at the start when they start playing the ballpoint slightly, they'll charge up, they'll peek, and then they'll release, thinking it'll just go at the max range once you start firing. But obviously, with the ballpoint, this is different. It's going to use your turret mode first, which is the short range mode when you peek to the side and then it's gonna eventually go into your long range mode after like half a second to a second. Yep so getting used to that uh, would be a good way to start off with your aim drills and then as obviously with every weapon you want you want to be aiming from dummy to dummy. What I've also been trying to do is you know just try and limit yourself to how long you can flick onto your um, dummy and then flick to another one and then if you didn't kill that dummy you just flicked onto or the one that you previously flicked onto, sorry. You kind of go back to that one, and if you didn't kill the one you just killed, you go back to that one. So really make your brain think, um, because sometimes in the game what I'll do is I'll flick to an opponent, I feel like I'll kill them, then I'll flick to someone else, and then I have to f flick back to them. So there's a lot of flicking going on, but I'll make sure to have um, an example on the screen of what I mean by this. Um, but yeah, practicing that, obviously with the ballpoint slightly, your velocity is very 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 slow so you're gonna have to be aiming ahead predicting where your opponents are going um so making sure you're keeping that tracking on point um being able to predict and all that so making sure using your moving dummies um in the training room to be able to aim ahead get used to how far ahead you have to aim because it's actually quite a bit further ahead you're gonna have to track compared to whatever it is, a charger, a hydra, or something like that, uh, just because of how slow the bullets travel in the air. So making sure you're getting used to that, making sure you're getting used to your turret mode, getting nice and close, being able to flick onto them dummies really quick, um, getting used to the tracking speed of that and all that. So yeah, aim drills are just going to be nice and basic. You don't need a super high sensitivity because you're going to be aiming at long range for most of your kills. I would say somewhere between 70 to 80% of your kills should come from your long range mode. But then again, you don't want to be playing super passive where you, all your kills are coming from long range mode. Sometimes you have to help your teammates push up, use your short turret mode, and uh, secure those kills in a 2v1 situation, for example. All right, your matchups. Uh, most of them are actually going to be quite beneficial towards the ballpoint, which is why I'm always confused as, as to why this has kind of dropped out of the meta. Um, you basically get to have uh, free range over every weapon class except for charges. You'll, you'll struggle against uh, some hydras and then some rapid pros. Everything else should be just about free money for you. Obviously this has only dropped out of the meta because of all the nerfs it's had. People just feel underwhelmed because of how overpowered it was and no one is really used to it now. And also the fact that charges are really up there in the meta right now, especially like E-leaders, five fins that even have a splash wall, so it's even harder to kill charges. So you basically have to just, you know, flat out ignore them as a ballpoint. Rapid pros can also be a struggle if you're trying to, you know, you're always trying to charge up behind walls. They can kind of just shoot just around the corner and the blast radius, you know, it can be a bit of a struggle. That's why rapid pros and even normal rapid blasters can be a struggle. But yeah, everything else, you know, short range sloshes, you know, normal shooters should be good matchups of all point as long as you can keep your distance, keep good spacing and all that, even if you can, you know, draw attention to yourselves and then your front lines can come get a pick. 
and all that. Yeah, I think that's going to be everything under the ballpoint Fightling guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, go follow my Twitter, Twitch, Discord, all that. And um, yeah, if you have any suggestions for future videos, make sure to comment below Discord server somewhere. Just let me know if any ideas you might have or if any other ideas you might have for, you know, other guys, something like that. I don't know. But yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, and we'll catch you all next time in the next video.